TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Salam and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem in today's top stories. Amid the rising tide in Palestinian terror, Jerusalem has ratcheted up its retaliatory measures to try and deter future attacks. The United States reportedly holds indirect talks with Iran on releasing American citizens unjustly detained by the Islamic Republic. Amid the rising tide in Palestinian terror directed at Israelis in the Israeli capital and the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria, Jerusalem has ratcheted up its retaliatory measures to try and deter future attacks. Over the course of the past 72 hours, as part of Operation Wavesbreaker, the IDF, ISA or Shin Bet, and Border Police Special Operations Forces conducted extensive counter-terror activity in Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley, during the course of which 59 suspected terror operatives were successfully apprehended. It is important to note that while the forces operated in the city of Nablus, exchanges of fire were reported with local militants. As a result, Palestinian health authorities confirmed that one of the armed militants, a 17-year-old teenager, was killed and a number of additional militants sustained injuries. In contrast, no injuries were reported among the Israeli forces. Meanwhile, the Israeli parliament, or Knesset in Hebrew, adopted a law in which Palestinians who committed acts of terror and received monetary compensation from the Palestinian Authority will be stripped of their citizenship or residency status. על החוק לביטול אזרחותו או תושבותו של פעיל טרור שמקבל תגמול עבור ביצוע מעשה הטרור לקריאה שלישית. מי בעד, מי נגד, מי נמנע. אני קובע שהצעת חוק לביטול אזרחותו או תושבותו של פעיל טרור שמקבל תגמול עבור ביצוע מעשה הטרור (תיקוני חקיקה) התשפ"ג 23 התקבלה בקריאה השנייה והשלישית ותיכנס לספר החוקים. תודה. Convicted terrorists who were released after completing their decades-long sentences in Israeli prisons outcry the new Israeli bill as they benefit from the Palestinian Authority's monetary support. لإفلاسهم بدهم يثبتوا لشعبهم أنهم قادرين يسطروا على الجانب السياسي في القدس أو في, في, في الضفة الغربية أو غير الضفة الغربية بنغفر كاعد بصرح قبل سبعين أو شهر حملات على الأسرة حملات على السجون حملات على المقدسيين حملات تعن هدهان يعني حامل عصاي بلوح تعن نزل نخالف تعن نزل نهدم it is important to highlight that the Palestinian Authority persistently refuses to halt payments to Palestinians who committed acts of terror against Israelis, despite being heavily funded by the United States, the European Union, and even Israel itself. Earlier this month, the EU announced another package of support to the Palestinians, amounting to 296 million euros, of which 199.2 million were pledged to the Palestinian Authority. Separately, the United States under the Biden administration keeps asserting its continued efforts to assist both Israel and the Palestinians to reach a viable solution that would end the decades-old conflict and is adamant on continuing its support to the Palestinian Authority, which has already amounted to almost $1 billion. We are going to look for ways to uh, support the parties as they take steps that keep the viability of a two-state solution uh, on the books uh, and that, in tangible ways, uh, seek to improve the lives of uh, the Palestinian people in the meantime. We have uh, focused on that from the very start of this administration, undertaking the task of uh, reinitiating a relationship with the Palestinian Authority and the Palestinian people and subsequently providing to the Palestinian people uh, nearly a billion dollars, some uh, more than 900 million dollars in humanitarian assistance uh, as a means by which to uh, 
uh, tangibly improve uh, their lives, but also uh, to, we hope, uh, instill uh, a bit of hope, uh, perhaps a, a bit of optimism uh, that wasn't there before. Moderate Arab states are worried about Israeli policies in the territories and are monitoring the situation with concern. One senior Arab diplomat who spoke to Israel's public Khan radio stressed that if Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu wants to focus on the fight against Iran and on expanding the Abram Accords, he should avoid losing control of the Palestinian arena overall and of the Temple Mount in particular. The diplomat further underscored that the Arab world is concerned that Finance Minister Bezalel Smutrich, who supports annexing Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley, is scheduled to eventually be given authority over the civil administration, which maintains executive powers of the referred to territories. Meanwhile, in contrast, residents of Beit Hulga outpost which is one of the communities which Jerusalem pledged to legalize in response to the wave of terror, celebrated the announcement proclaiming that the government's decision will help expand the Jewish settlement. When you saw the news, we are very happy. And we are with, it was with tears in my eyes, in our eyes. And it was a very, 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 uh, I don't know, joy, uh, happy. And we come here to celebrate with the, all the uh, neighbors. We hope that the government uh, decision will bring us uh, a lot of families and we can build here a big settlement with uh, 700 uh, families. Yagel further underscored that for the settlement enterprise, the most important mission is to fulfill the return of the people of Israel to their ancestral homeland. This is the biggest, I think, the most important uh, things we have in uh, our religions to, to believe at, the, at our country that belongs to the people of Israel, Israeli people. And uh, we believe that is very uh, a historic place for the people of Israel. Despite Yagel's aspirations, Jerusalem is subject to mounting international pressure not to expand its settlements in disputed lands which the Palestinians demand for a future state. Alongside the United States, Arab and other Israeli allies and partners have joined in making their objections known to Israel with possible ramifications if those calls would be outright dismissed. Um, when it comes to our Israeli partners, we've had a, a single message to them. It's precisely the message uh, that you all heard from the secretary on Monday, that you heard from our Quint, our so-called Quint partners, uh, the following day. Uh, and it is a, a message of deep concern uh, over the announcement of outpost legalizations and, uh, uh, and uh, additional settlements. Uh, we believe these are obstacles to peace. Uh, what we seek to do is to preserve uh, the prospects for and the viability of a negotiated two-state solution between Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, we believe that this announcement, uh, the announcement from earlier this week, uh, just as previous announcements have, uh, set back that cause rather than advance it. Price was further asked about a trip U.S. Special Envoy for Iran Rob Maley made to the Sultanate of Oman where prior engagements under the Obama administration were made in relations to the Islamic Republic of Iran, which ultimately brought about the adoption of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, which is the technical term for the 2015 nuclear agreement. Rob tweeted this morning that he had a very good set of meetings uh, in Oman. They discussed a number of uh, issues related to Iran. Uh, Rob Malley is, of course, a special envoy for Iran, so you can imagine that all of his uh, engagements will be primarily focused on Iran. To the point I made earlier about uh, the instrumental role Oman has played in helping to solve challenges, uh, helping to um, uh, bridge divides, uh, Oman did play a very uh, useful and important role in the uh, decision on the part of uh, the Iranian regime to release Bakr Namazi. Uh, they were very supportive as part of our long-standing, persistent efforts to see all of our wrongful detainees freed and to 
uh, help effectuate the release from Iranian custody of Bakr Namazi uh, not all that long ago. Price was further asked about an NBC report which unveiled indirect talks between the United States and Iran, which are being mediated by Qatar and the United Kingdom, on the release of U.S. citizens that were deliberately detained by the Islamic Republic. As part of this report, the United States supposedly offered to allow South Korea to free $1 billion in frozen Iranian funds in return for the release of the American citizens. While stopping short of denying the published information, Price noted that he could not confirm or speak to the details of the report. That's just one of the details of the report. I'm not in a position to confirm or to speak to. Uh, we engage regularly with our partners around the world to thank them for uh, upholding the sanctions regime that uh, is in place and that uh, will be in place until and unless uh, Iran uh, addresses the challenge that its nuclear program uh, poses to the United States, poses to our allies and partners, uh, and poses to uh, the broader region. Thank you for joining TV7 Israel News. We would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Eyu Pinto, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, a blessed evening, and God willing, we will see you again on Monday, as tomorrow evening, TV7 Israel will air Powers in Play with Amir Oren. Until then, Shalom.